and welcome back. This is your GMC Sierra tweet of the night, PFF. Broderick Jones in week 10, 82.7 pass blocking grade, 32 pass blocking snaps, and zero pressures allowed. First career game with five plus pass blocks. Jeez, I can't talk. Uh, snaps and zero pressures allowed. Look. Hey, these are some great stats for a guy that, you know, we've seen kind of cause a couple penalties here and there throughout this season. So nice to see a positive stat line there for Broderick Jones. And hey, I think that offensive line for as much tumultuous situations they've been in, as much as they've had to kind of, you know, uh, refigure their O-line with the amount of injuries that have happened, the youth that they have on that O-line, it's pretty impressive, I think, how they're performing uh, this season. Yeah, it really is, and they've run the ball well. Mm -hmm. uh, Broderick Jones has not been perfect. I think ideally for the Steelers, he winds up at left tackle. Right. I think Dan Moore Jr. is probably cruising toward a nice payday and free agency. He's done an excellent job this season, but I think long term for the Steelers, Troy Fatano establishes himself at right tackle. I think Broderick Jones is probably a better left tackle, and that's just kind of the thing that nobody wants to say right now. Uh, it was good for Broderick what he did against the Commanders. He's obviously had some penalty trouble, really ill-timed penalties as well. Uh, I thought that was the best game that he's played though, so far. Um, Isaac Sayamalu has been extremely steady since he's come back. I've really liked Mason McCormick mm -hmm. at right guard. I think he's had a lot to do with their running game. And Zach Frazier, I mean, not only one of the best rookie offensive linemen, if you look at some of those same PFF grades, he's one of the best centers in all of football. He's right up there with uh, Creed Humphrey, uh, Tyler Linder Linderbaum, excuse me. Uh, but he's, he's graded out extremely well. Yeah, I've been impressed with what the Steelers' offensive line has been able Able to do and yeah like we're, we're talking about a lot of injuries yeah and it was awesome to see him come back so quickly too when Zach went down I was a little nervous about that but to see him come back and perform the way he has been since that injury has been really impressive obviously huge game tomorrow two seven win teams rivalry game but also a battle for the top spot in the AFC North Raven Steelers uh, I expect probably a sold out crowd tomorrow in Akershire it's the game everyone's been talking about all week long just so excited for this one um, I want to talk a little bit about this Ravens offense, you know, number one right now in so many offensive statistical categories. I think the battle we're all waiting to see is this Ravens offense against this dominant Steelers defense. Um, just Jason, what do you think is going to end up happening tomorrow between the run game, Lamar, Derek going up against, you know, obviously these linebackers we have in, in TJ and uh, Alex Heiss, well, Alex, Nick Herbig. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, it's not an easy task for any of them. Uh, Lamar Jackson is good. I know nobody needs me to tell them that. Uh, I just worry about what the Steelers can do to contain Lamar. I, they've done a good job with him previously. Um, some of his numbers against the Steelers are surprisingly low. The Steelers have had success uh, both sacking him and in the win-loss category. This has also been kind of a different Lamar Jackson this season. He's mm -hmm. been able to get it done from the pocket. There are weapons around him. I'm curious to see when they're able to actually get Deontay Johnson involved. He hasn't done a lot for the Ravens so far, but Isaiah likely, Mark Andrews, Zay Flowers, you know about the weapons. Derrick Henry, uh, you know, until the game the other night from Saquon Barkley was leading the NFL in rushing. I just, I, I don't know how you tackle Derrick Henry. I don't know how he does what he does. Um, just uh, is a freight train to try <laughs> to bring down. I think the Steelers are going to have to score a lot of points. I, I don't, I don't see this as a game where they're going to be able to win 13-10 or 17-14 like some of the matchups in this series. I think the offense for Baltimore is very, very good, and thankfully for the Steelers, Russell Wilson has breathed a different kind of life into the Steelers' offense. Yeah, I definitely agree with you there. We are going to take some callers now. Let's go to John in Cranberry who wants to talk some Steelers. John, what's going on? Hey, guys. Thanks for uh, taking my call. It's good to talk to you, Cassidy and Jason. Um, so, yeah, about the pit game, you know, I think one of the problems that I saw, and not just today, but going forward is the offensive line. I think the injuries caught up with them. They gave up, I think, six sacks. They had constant pressures. So I think that was a big factor. But the reason for my call, I wanted to ask you guys for tomorrow, Cassidy, you just brought up the uh, Ravens' offense is incredible. But on the other side of the ball, I, is, I think Jalen Warren may be out. And if he is, I want to get yours and Jason's take on the game plan for Arthur Smith tomorrow, if you think they're going to pass more. I mean, we saw Najee, but if Warren's out, I just want to think, how, how do you think we're going to attack the Ravens' defense? So thanks for taking my call, guys. Yeah, I did see that today. Jalen Warren officially questionable for tomorrow. I mean, hey, questionable is not out. There is a sliver of hope maybe that he does get in tomorrow. 
I mean, am interested to see too, you know, we keep hearing about a possible package of designed runs for Justin Fields. Haven't seen that yet. Uh, wonder if maybe we'll get a chance to see that tomorrow. Obviously, it would have to be a special circumstance to see that. Um, but what are you thinking, Jason? I would actually throw it more, and I'll be curious to see if they throw it more. I'm not trying to diminish, you know, what Justin Fields may be a part of. Uh, Najee Harris is going to have to run well. They're going to have to establish him kind of more than they did last week, I think. And if Jalen Warren is a part of this thing, that's great. But to me, the weakness of the Ravens defense is how they defend the pass. They're one of the worst in the NFL. I think they're giving up around 300 yards per game. Don't quote me on that, but the number is not favorable. I understand Mike Tomlin talked about this a little Tuesday, said it was more circumstantial, that they're just ahead in games and teams are playing catch up, whatever. I've watched the Ravens now probably six or seven times this season. That's a pass defense that can be had. Now, I don't know how the Steelers are going to do it, whether it becomes George Pickens, Mike Williams, Calvin Austin III, Van Jefferson, Pat Fryermuth, etc. But there will be opportunities. If Russell Wilson is able to get the open guy the football, I think the Steelers will be able to move the ball. That's, again, not to say the running game is not important, but I'm really looking more toward the pass. Yeah, I agree with you there. I mean, especially now having Mike Williams, you know, we can see he can go out there and get it done in the end zone. And that was really exciting for fans to see, I think, on Sunday against the Commanders. Maybe, you know, he can get in the end zone again. I think also having him has opened up George Pickens a little bit more, created some healthy competition for him. Um, so, and Russ, I mean, yeah, it's just so exciting to see him kind of get back to that Seattle Russ that we all knew before Denver. It's almost like he erased that two year stint in Denver. Um, and so, yeah, I, I think it'll, I, I agree with you on that. I think it will be more of an air raid offense tomorrow, most likely. Um, let's go to David in Finleyville. David, what's going on? Yes, thank you for taking my call. I want to ask yourself and uh, Jason if, the, if you guys think if the Steers have a, enough team, good enough team to get to the Super Bowl this year. Mm. I think tomorrow is going to be a big test, yeah. obviously. I mean, I think tomorrow will be the big test. If they can go out there and really dominate this Ravens team, I, could, I see a deep run in the playoffs. But I think tomorrow is really going to be their big test. The fact that they were able to get it done in Washington the way they were, there were some mistakes that were made in that game where I think typically in the past, recent past, Steelers teams, it might have choked them up. They might have not been able to finish that game. Jalen Warren's fumble at that one-yard line, that made me really nervous but for them to be able to then go down on that next drive and score the go eventually go ahead touchdown um, was really nice to see because I do think teams previous might have not been able to bounce back from that so uh, it is you know we've seen some things this season where you could say make a case where maybe they could make a deep run in these playoffs maybe we could see them in the Super Bowl yeah, it's an interesting question, David, and I, I kind of made a face there because I, I think <laughs> some of what you have laid out and you know, some of what David asked, like, I don't think it's crazy. If I look at the rest of the AFC, like, I think the Chiefs are going to lose at some point. I don't think they're going to go undefeated. I don't think this is as dynamic of a Chiefs team as we've seen. Buffalo's been doing what they've been doing, but if you look at the teams they're playing, the competition isn't very good. I think the Steelers probably have the most complete team. If you look at the Ravens, yeah, the offense is fantastic, but the pass defense and the defense in general is not what we're used to seeing from Baltimore. Offense plus defense, I think the Steelers are right there. Um, I, I, I'm not taking the Houston Texans terribly seriously at this point. They're not able to beat the Lions last week despite five interceptions, etc. But yeah, I mean, it's early. We don't know, uh, or it's early for saying that a team, you know, has what it takes to go to the Super Bowl. I think the NFC, AFC North schedule, I think, is going to tell us a lot about this team. But you know, I like where David's brain's at. Mm -hmm. I think there's some uh, some possibilities there. Yeah, definitely have a, gaunt, a gauntlet of a schedule coming up for straight divisional games. So hopefully they can, you know, at least go like three and one in that stretch, I would say. But, you know, we'll see. We're going to head to break. Give us a call at 412-575-2600. We want to hear from you guys. Another one I want to talk about. So we talked a lot about this Ravens offense going up against the Steelers defense, but there's one guy on the Steelers defense that has a little bit in Pat Queen that has a little bit of animosity, I think, towards this team. I think he's going to go out there tomorrow and have just like a legacy game, you know, with what he shared with us and how things kind of ended in Baltimore. It seems like he might have 
some feelings there and maybe he can, you know, turn that into a positive product out on the field tomorrow. I hope so for his sake, Cassidy. I've really liked dealing with Patrick Queen. He's a lot of fun. I was on Baltimore radio this week and we were talking about Patrick Queen and how much they enjoyed him. And he's just a fun guy. He loves talking trash. Remember the video? I don't know if you caught this um, over the summer. Patrick Queen was watering his grass. It was like trolling the Ravens in some way about the grass being greener on the other side. <laughs> I wrote a column back when they were in Latrobe about um, how much he sort of embraced this villain role too. Like he likes it. I think he still has friends on the Ravens, but yeah, as he talked about at the facility this week, they didn't offer him a contract. They didn't really have any use for him. And I think Patrick Queen is out to prove them wrong. I hope he does. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And after a slow start, he's been really good lately. He's been very active. He's been a big part of their pass defense. I thought last week was the best game he's played. And so, yeah, I'm looking for him to have a little extra juice against his former team. Yeah, it'll be very exciting. Again, huge game tomorrow. Uh, should be thrilling. Also, do want to mention Penn State. Huge win today against Purdue. Almost 50 burger to 49 to 14, I think, was the final. 49-10. Um, Penn State now 10 and 1, I believe. So, um, just rolling, hopefully, throughout the end of the season. But uh, were you able to catch any of that one today, Jay? A little bit, off and on. Uh, <laughs> off and on. I was uh, end of pit beginning of Penguins, but right. uh, they had run the score up pretty good. I yeah. read and saw a little bit of it, though, and Tyler Warren for Heisman, absolutely. I like Penn State in the college football playoff. The bracket I saw had them playing uh, Old Miss in the first round. I, that was I like awesome. it. Uh, they are most notably not Ohio State, so I right. think that would work out to Penn State's benefit. Uh, I totally agree. Either way, I'm so excited to see how this college football playoff picture is going to pan out. I'm so pumped for that. But, Jason, thank you so much for joining me tonight. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next week.